Four years ago, I was volunteering with my two co-founders, Lila and Justine, in a fairly typical Nairobi children's home, helping out with whatever chores we could help out with. There was a boy at that first orphanage where we volunteered, and when I first went there, he was 12 years old, and he told me he wanted to be a journalist. And this was a really bright kid, you know, he was top of his class, he was kind, he was intelligent, he was observant. This is what he wanted to do, he was going to be a great journalist. And then we came back for a second trip six months later and I spoke to him and uh, he just had his 13th birthday and we just asked him, so you still want to be a journalist? And in those six months his hope had died. During those six months, he'd had this horrific realization that he wasn't going to be a journalist. And for me, this was this seminal moment where it was just, we have to do this better. We have to make sure these children do not lose hope at 12 and a half years old. My name is Toby Story Pugh and I'm executive director and co-founder of Flying Kites. Our vision for our children is to provide them with a quality of care that lets them go on and be future leaders in their country. We give them the tools they need to truly fulfill their potential. These children, these African children, the kids that we care for, have exactly the same hopes and dreams as our own children. They want to be lawyers, they want to be doctors, they want to be politicians, they want to be pilots, they want to be sports men and women. The only thing that happens is that they don't get the chance to even work towards those ambitions. We were working in these incredibly challenging neighborhoods, highly populated, dirty, crime-ridden, not good environments for children to be brought up in, and yet these children were so alive and so vivacious and so full of hope. <laughs> And I think we all felt the same thing, which was that to leave them there without trying to give them a chance to fulfill their dreams would be to betray that hope. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to do anything new or start a number of our own programs. So it's incredibly important to us to partner with local and international organizations that can, can work with the kids, can, can help our program. And one of the newer relationships that we have is with the Good Makers film team based in Los Angeles, California, and their Good Makers street team as well. Good they're, they're from a creative background and are, you know, an incredible group of young and passionate uh, performing artists who recognize the incredible power that, that there is in the performing arts. They work with underserved communities in the U.S. And this, this idea of a community event suddenly started to, to take some form. And they're going to be working directly with some of the Oasis homes to do dance, drama, spoken word performance, DJing, break dancing, everything. What up? This is Ren, aka DJ Jaw, with the Good Makers. And I'd like to introduce kids to the art that saves their life. We are incredibly excited to host them because this is not um, the type of relationship that we've, we've had in the past. We've done financial trainings, we've done um, some health workshops, that sort of thing. But this is really something that's for the kids directly that's going to impact their day-to-day -day life over their summer break. Are you going to let your emotional life be run by Time magazine? So we began to think, how could we develop the sense of community? How could we take it to the next level? How could we bring in more people? How could we make it part of a wider community? Um, and that was where the concept of the Oasis Festival first came about. We started to come up with the idea of combining our workshops with the music and dance of a live festival. We realized that we'll need to partner with a local Kenyan group over there to make sure that what we do here works with what they do over there. So we did an extensive search online and through all that we found a group called Dashi Crew and found an email address of theirs and some videos and after kind of checking them out we reached out to them. Yes. <laughs> They seem great. They're very artistic. They seem very community-based. They do a lot of work with local youth there in Nairobi. And I think they're going to be a great fit for us. You could ask why, you know, why come into a you know, nice, stable environment and bring in all this energy and disrupt their routine. And it's, it's quite simple. It's an opportunity for these children to showcase who they are and what they can do. So how was the flight? Was it all good? It was great. 
Yeah? How you doing, Joe? Excellent. Did you get good sleeps on the plane? I did, actually, surprisingly. Yeah. You hear about things, you see things on the TV, but, you know, I'm about to experience it, the real thing. Is that Mikey there? It Hello. is Mikey there. Never thought that I would do something like this. We're here. We made it. I am pumped. I'm ready to go, but uh, I'm scared. To me, none of it was really real until I walked into Mathari. Walking through Mathari was, was shocking to me. It's just, it's harsh. It's a harsh landscape. It's a harsh place to live. I could, could not imagine. But what else was shocking, I think, were the people. I've never seen anybody in that type of landscape or environment be so upbeat and, and happy and with smiles on their faces. All of a sudden, all these children just flocked around us and started smiling and laughing and grabbing at our legs and following us around in the most beautiful way. All the kids just surrounded you with this wonderment and these smiles. You just instantly connect with humanity. Okay, we should go to Dashi Crew. Yeah, let's go. So after all our Skype calls and emails and, uh, you know, meeting over the internet, we are on our way to see Dashi Crew. We're here. We're here. Hey. As we walked in, I was surprised to see how many people were there. And it was just wild. You're talking about the B-Boys and the B-Girls. This is, I mean, this is where it all started for me. To the top, I never gonna stop. It was electric. It was alive. It was really cool. We showed up and immediately we felt like we'd known each other for years, like mm -hmm. they were just family. And then at the end, you know, they all sit down together in a circle and they pray together. I thank you because each and every youth who is in this place, Lord, they will not get lost their father, but they will become a backbone of this nation, their children. And that's just something that you don't, you don't see a lot of b-boy communities anywhere else in the world doing. <laughs> Hello for a production meeting in Africa. Absolutely not um, a, a talent show. It's not anything that anyone should stress about. This really is about the children bringing their voices and their talents and their hopes and wishes and dreams. So I think again, Flying Heights for being here so that we have this story to tell and everyone else who's jumped in is just it's awesome. So the plan is to have the street team split up and work with the children in the various orphanages to develop and rehearse their own dance, song and spoken word pieces. After two weeks, they will all come together to perform on stage, along with some of Kenya's biggest pop stars. So with the Good Makers film team and the Good Makers street team here in place, they've started workshops with the kids. And this involves about four hours a day with each home within the Oasis program. So we were split up into red team and green team. And Jawa and myself were on red team, and we had two Dashi members with us that were Blizzy and Ed. And Rachel, Max, and Marushka were on green team with Liz, Kama, and Renee. Today was our first day um, seeing Rehema, 
one of the schools that we're going to get to work with for the next two weeks. And we hadn't had any kind of practice space yet, so we just sort of walked around and I think someone just came up with the idea to go up on the roof. I'm so happy everyone is here. I hope it's going to be a great collaboration with the Good Makers team, uh, Oasis, and Spraham. And Shikru. Crew. The first day on the rooftop, it was kind of a getting to know you, getting them out of their shells, because of course we're strangers coming onto their turf. So you kind of have to get them to warm up a little bit. I like music. When I grow up, I like to be an aircraft engineer. In the future, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an actress. I'm really excited to be here and, and hang out with you guys. And we're going to do a lot of cool things and play and sing and dance. And uh, at the end of the two weeks, we're going to be doing this really great festival event with everybody here and some more schools. And it's going to be really, really cool. So I'm happy to be here with you guys. So on August 20th, there will be a big festival. And we will have three other groups like you that we will be working with and each group is going to have their own song so then you will perform your song with either dance or you can sing or you can do poetry or whatever you like uh, the different artists that have agreed to to donate any music to use for the festival have been uh, Jimmy Gate, Emmy Coast Gay, Daddy Owen um, we also have a few songs donated by Y Ray and um, you know any any of the top songs, I'm sure we can manage to get. So you guys can choose whichever song that you like, and then any any kind of routine or dance that you want to do is completely up to you. Anything that you already have is already is a good start. And because we're gonna do one performance all together, I wanted to ask you guys what you wanted to do. If you wanted to do a dance or a song. And so maybe if you go around and say your name, and then say what it is you would like to do for the performance. If you want to just dance, if you want to play drums, if you want to sing, if you want to do anything. But I want to find out from you guys what it is you want to do when you perform. Does that make sense? Do you understand? Yes? OK, cool. Our first day on Red Team was Definitely nerve-wracking for me. Um, it was, I didn't expect it, but it was difficult to be working with boys only. Being a white girl in that situation and trying to take command, I actually found that there was a challenge which I didn't anticipate. Our kids also the first day did not want to dance <laughs> at all. Uh, and they kind of looked at us like we were insane. And then we turned on music and everything changed. And you just understand like there's, there's no difference between me and her, me and him. We're just people. And so all of my walls just came <laughs> crashing down. Everything I had thought and prepared for and, and every, everything I was ready for just was kind of yanked away from me in this really gorgeous, sort of raw way. So the first two days, we are going to be doing little games that may seem silly, like why am I doing this? But you will see over the few days when we do this big festival, it is because we all have to go day by day by day, okay? So that is why we are here today. We are going to start. Today is day one, and we have 10 days. I think it's going to be a little difficult. We should just start warming up here, I think, with no music, just to get our bodies moving so we're not standing around anymore. Yeah. We have Dashy Crew, which I think will be an extreme help. Let's go for it, Some kids, I don't think, were completely open to us yet. Some were wandering around. The uh, teachers weren't really around either to corral them back. So I think we're basically on our own. I hope we can do it. You can tell there are some kids that are more open than others. can help with this, okay? 
So we will go. There are moments where I'm like, okay, are we gonna pull this off? How much time do we have for the festival? And you know, I'm wondering, are we gonna have to be kind of like caretaking them on stage when they're performing? I really have to bring a lot to the table to get them to want to rehearse like a few more times when I know that we need it. When I remind them about the opportunity that they have and, and what it's allowing them to express about their community, you know, I, I see lights go on in a lot of them, so, so hopefully we'll just keep riding that wave and, um, and just make it happen. Today we were focusing on five main concepts that they kept bringing up, which was education, leadership, environmental care, human rights, and community. And I asked them to draw out a graph of what proportionally they think is most important. And um, this is what they wrote. So education being the biggest, what they think is the biggest solution, human rights, environmental care, and leadership. And then there is one girl in particular whose name is Lavender. She's one of the smartest 14-year-olds that I know. When I asked her to, to write, she, she wrote about um, drug abuse and the importance of leadership in her country. And she was having kind of a difficult time with the dancing. So she just came up to me and she said, I surrender, I'm not a dancer, I'd like to do a speech. I wrote a speech. So she came up and handed me an extra three-page speech that she had written herself that nobody asked her to write, addressing the importance of leadership and education and communication in her environment. Um, she addressed Nelson Mandela and President Obama in her speech. I was a bit nervous because I used to speak in front of those people who are the same age, so I did not expect to speak in front of Biggie people who can really give me attention. So I was a bit nervous. There is nobody to give us attention that we need to be given. We want to speak out about what we have in our hearts, but the world tells us to keep quiet, and that makes nobody listen to our story with nobody to support us. She studies day and night next to a room full of chickens, um, but she doesn't care, and she's brilliant, and her handwriting is better than mine. I just say, wow, how am I going to start in front of these people? How to start? But when Marushka first told me that if you have confidence, you can really do a lot, and for now, I have that confidence, and I'm very sure that I can speak in front of many people, no matter what, I can speak. She could rival any 14-year-old I've, I've met anywhere else in the world. I feel absolutely astonished and beyond inspired. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Yay. Green team, we had some amazing Wait, can I just ask a quick yes. question before we move yeah. on? Um, I had heard that there might have been a little tension between Siloam children and St. Catherine's children. Do you find that to be the case, or was that just like an, an offhand comment that doesn't make any sense? Not necessarily so. negative tension, but more just like they weren't comfortable they're, around they're, each other. Um, I think they were comfortable with the kids that they know, and they, they're kind of like they're maybe just like an identity no, thing there. I don't, there I don't think so. I don't think so. No. They're just you know, <laughs> they're just, they're just faces. I don't know if there's village tension in no. Kibera. I, I don't know how it works. Like, you think that one orphanage would be very close to another, but in actuality, you know, they can be miles apart, and the only transportation is walking. So we're, we're trying to make it as safe as possible for the children within the slums, and thinking of combining Siloam, which is one school, with St. Catherine's, which is another one, into a common meeting area, which would give us more security and um, also break up our routine of going to the same place every day at the same time. After hearing of a few other people being robbed, we increased our security a bit wisely and decided it was probably a really good idea to change up our routine. It's been about two and a half days that we've had now with the kids, and on the first day, we saw a lot of really quiet faces. We were thinking maybe they weren't so excited about the opportunity to have visitors come in and give them this opportunity to speak out about their community. But then on the second day, it was a bit better because we got, we got to know them and the names and, uh, and who we were and what we do. They're now more social than yesterday. And I think it's because of uh, the way we sat down and um, talked to them and started uh, asking them so many things that they face every day. 
and they were open up they open up to tell us and because of that now I feel like we can now um, do anything with them we can give them something and they can they have an open mind now so it's going great there are no words to describe the amazing personalities and the phenomenal children that live in these homes. We've been helping the kids kind of create their own song and their own voice, what they want to express, and that's been, I think, a very important part of this, uh, this whole process. A big part of what we're going to do is these trust exercises because we want to get to know our partners and we want to get to know, without words, how to talk to people. In spite of any difficulties um, during any of the workshops, I always try to relay good philosophies, you know, to the kids. And one of the things I always try to remind them is that if today was your last day, then the three things that you want to have is love in your heart, your dignity intact, and no regrets. So this exercise is called the mirror exercise. By doing this, we create unity, and then we can learn to speak to each other without using our words. Thank God for um, Renee and Liz and, and Dashi, that I, the Dashi numbers that I had with me today because they completely open up the kids and them being able to also be able to speak Kiswahili as well I think just makes them feel so comfortable. <laughs> Every day, whichever it is, ineza kwa kubeshte, ineza kwa anything to adayo kata cabbage, anything. I feel like we have been friends with them our whole lives. So we've really clicked and it's been the perfect melding that they love to dance, so it seems perfect that they would love to teach dance. Rahema is blowing my mind. These kids, like every day, more and more, they're just unfolding. And it's also really personal. It's about talking about what, what the kids want to be when they grow up, what their hopes for the future are, how they feel about their community. I think it's true that no matter where you go, kids are gonna have aspirations, gonna have the same dreams, they're gonna want the same future for themselves. If anything, I think in Kenya, all of those desires are stronger and they come out in a younger age. The, a lot of these kids have been forced to help raise their siblings or to help take care of themselves far before we would expect the average child to. And I think that comes out then in the things that they wanna do with their life and the direction they wanna take themselves in. They're more achievement focus. They know that education is their key to success. I want to be a lawyer and a journalist. Is that to help children, orphans and the widowers because they're the ones who most of the times they're being denied their rights because they don't have anyone to support them in their lives. Also I want to change the surrounding that I live in, the society to become a very strong society where people can understand each other where people can associate with others and form a new, and form a very good organization or a very good society. Our standard of education is high. 50 minutes, that's the total time is left. My names are Erastas Mohango. I'm the director of Rehema Daycare and Orphan Center. This school have made me to have very big dreams. What we are producing here uh, is the best. Think about starvation, think about people. Their certificates that they don't have, they are jobless. Education is the key. Yeah. I mean, only people. Um, because a child will be able to, this child when he grows up will be able to take care of himself. We have really committed volunteer to help the community to change, even to even the whole Nairobi. Our teachers always encourage us to work hard because we don't know tomorrow. God is the only one who knows tomorrow. We have a lot of challenges, like the orphans. The orphans need to be given everything. The other challenge is 
you can see our classes. We just squeeze in a small places. Even where the teacher can pass to see the, the work of the pupil is very difficult. The other thing is the challenge, big challenges, is our teachers. They are really determined to help the kids. But sometimes they are forced to leave to go and look somewhere else where they will get good pay. There's many challenges that we are facing. Sometimes we have no water. Sometimes we have no food, but we have to struggle so that they must get enough food for the day. We have been able to start implementing practices that will hopefully eliminate these kinds of, of problems that the children suffer from. For us, it's just simply the, the vastness of difference in the need for care that exists here in Kenya that motivates us to come here. These are children who will die if someone doesn't intervene. There are almost no words to describe it. It's just, hold on, sorry. The partnership with Good Makers Films has been incredible. These are relationships that, in general, I don't have the privilege or the ability to build within Oasis. I'm in and out. I'm saying hi to the kids and I'm talking to the director. And so to see this group of people that I respect and I'm so happy to have them here, to see them working with these kids day to day is absolutely wonderful. I've, I've gotten to know the kids better through them. The fact that these kids are getting a chance every day to work with people who are nurturing their creative tendencies and who are encouraging their talents and um, helping them to develop their talents is, is just phenomenal. The children are so excited every day when we arrive and the creative team just sweeps them off their feet for three hours and they're singing and they're dancing and they're laughing. They're opening up. <laughs> we are down to it. We have two more days before a big event. So when did that happen? This is the hard part. <laughs> I know. I know. Who who had a bit of a bumpy day today? <laughs> Self confession. <laughs> yeah, it was hard for me today because we changed our schedules. Mm -hmm. The food wasn't there. Um, we're sorting things out. We're trying to get interviews. Well, part of it, or yeah, it could be a separate instance. If I we just want to have her. Even if it's only There's a few like, of them that want There's to. There's like four or five of them who are, who are like. Uh, instead right. of yeah, transferring yeah. everyone to different places, keep seeing how it's out. The that whole site's going to be out. laid out to ensure that that happens. Um, we've got a good site layout. That, you know, the kind of terrain works with us to make it easier to secure a back area. But, and this is something for you, please, Connie. It is going beautifully. They're inspiring to work with. They're absolutely amazing. Every day there's something new, there's someone new, there's just life, 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 life. This is, dance is their way of expressing and everyone is listening. And you are going to be up there on the stage when you are dancing and you are singing the words that you wrote about educating youth and having good leaders. And you are going to change other people's lives in your society because they will see that if you can do it, then they can do it. So today's our last day for the festival. Um, we're super pleased. It's been insane in an amazing way.
It's been a monumental change from the first day that we've been with them to see them where they're at today, and I think it's going to be an amazing event for both them and everybody involved. Like today has been amazing. The choreography and everything, the kids are just eating it up. Um, you know, we're here just making it happen. <laughs> so many different kids come to surface with different talents and all of a sudden kids that have been quiet sitting in a corner will say, I have a poem and it's two days before the festival but it's absolutely exquisite and they want to share it. So um, they share it and we find a way to integrate it into the performance, especially that so many of the kids are desperate to represent their homes and their communities. So it's been super, super inspiring. All of us are really touched and moved and exhausted. <laughs> and. Um, Given that it was only 10 days ago that we really started working with these kids and we're all really, really excited. We feel like one enormous family now. We think it'll be really incredible. So guys, just how amazing was today, huh? <laughs> it was just unbelievable. <laughs> it was out of the park. Hey! You're literally doing everything, my dear fellow. How you doing? The truss is going to go vertically six meters and then horizontally and back in. We built this thing six meters high so we'd get a six meter truss for it. They're telling me it can't be done, um, so we're going to find a solution for it. The final things are going up, the stage is being finished, um, people are starting to show up, the chairs are in place. Are you nervous? A little bit? Yes. Yeah. And it's going to be really, really, really fun with all the local artists that we're going to have there, Daddy Owen and Jimmy Gate. The children from the orphanages themselves singing and dancing and reciting poetry and just giving a part of themselves.
We must think of our environment. environment. We must educate our youth. youth. We must think of our environment. environment. For you. front of you is Joan, ready to present to you a poem entitled Kibera, we need peace. Kibera, Kibera, we need peace. Kibera, Kibera, say no to ethnic division, say no to religious segregation. One community, one country, one tribe, fighting for unity, tiny as I am, thank you. Seeing what education meant to the kids over there really reinforced what education meant to me in my life and I want to kind of pursue that now and, and focus on, on education. It was so transformational for me. Africa let me remember myself. They're the most generous people, the most giving people, the most welcoming people. I see life here differently, I'm happier here and we all need to be connected. We just need someone to listen to us and that, that alone can be an incredible resource. You really feel like you're making a difference. I don't think the experience will ever stop hatching. New things will keep growing out of it. The most important thing that we can do for each other is to stick together. We look after each other. If we don't, then we're nothing and we're lost. In our community, there are a lot of people they just like to bring people down. They don't want to see someone going up. And she wants to be a journalist when she grows up. And she raised funds for Kenyans for Kenya by selling the chicken that was available within their compound. I used to say, I cannot make it. No one can understand me. That's why I cannot make it. But now, since you came, wow, I say I can, I can really make it. I can really stand strong. <laughs> 